I should probably say two, two words to describe how destructive and imposing. They cannot oh. stop this man. They cannot stop it. Alexander the Great trampling on the opposition. Usually when I see him lining up for a carry, you just got to think, run with him, because you know he's going to cause a bit of carnage and probably get through. With the ball in hand, he's unbelievable. He's probably one of the best front rowers in the world, really. You can't stop him. Look, he's right up with the best of them. I can't really give you an example of someone who's like him, because as I said before, he's unique. He was somebody that the, the tougher the game got, the more he came out, came out of his shell. You know, if they were a team that would be dirty, if they were, you know, trying to pick on any much smaller players, then he'd really come out of his shell and really start shining. He, he always stood up, even when we were kids, you could see that about him. For me it was, obviously I'd, I'd been studying for four years to be a quantity surveyor. Um, it's all I'd sort of ever prepared myself to be doing and, and to do. First time I ever met him was at Freshers' Fair. That's when we signed on all the players for the following season. And he actually said to me, can I get a scholarship out of you? And I just said, mate, you might not even get in my first team. So after he played the, the trial game, I looked at my assistant coach, Paul Cook, I said, how, how has he slipped through the net? And he just blew me away. I just couldn't believe that he hadn't been signed professional by somebody. Paul Cook, who was the assistant coach at Huddersfield, brought Nathan Brown here as well. So both Nathan and John Keir were watching him play. However, the cap had been filled at Huddersfield, so he couldn't sign him. Uh, so John jumped at the chance to, to sign him. Even though I signed for Batley after from my, my year at, my last year at Leeds Met, I, um, I was still always preparing to be a quantity surveyor. This, this level w was, was sort of a big step up and, and then the step up to Bartley was another huge sort of step up. And for me at the time, that was sort of the elite and I think that semi-professional sort of experience of, wow, this is brilliant. And I think that for me was what I felt was the ceiling in terms of my rugby league career. So at no point did I ever think that was going to deviate to what it has been. And I can remember actually going for a, a job interview and, and the guy who I went for an interview with in Wakefield was a Wakefield fan and, and he, he sort of asked me at the time, he's, you know, he's, I mean, I was 22 and he sort of said, you know, you're playing at Batley, you know, you're playing in, in some professional, we want someone who's going to be in this role for the next 20 years, we don't want someone who's just going to sort of come and leave, you know, we're not going to lose you to rugby, are we? And I said, well, listen, I'm, I'm 22, I think that boat's gone for me, it went for me before I even it was never even on the radar and it still isn't. You know, I've, if there was an opportunity, I think I've missed it because of my age. And um, he offered me the job off, off the back of that. And um, a few months later, I was signed for St. Helens. And it was actually a week before I was supposed to start working for him. <laughs> it was still a massive surprise. And the opportunities come out of nowhere. And, and to be honest, it, even then, though, it still didn't seem I'd go on and have the, the career I've sort of had, I suppose. And St. Helens are champions once again. Look, I'm sure um, there'll be people all the way along who, who anybody can talk to who want to say they've played some part in Alex's success that happens with a story like this. But there's no doubt in my mind why he's where he is is because of his parents, the two of the most um, amazing people I've ever met, are very straightforward people. And that strength and integrity has only come from one place and that's from, from his family. Mum battled cancer for 13 years. Um, you know, back at nine, ten years old. You know, when, when you hear that your mum's got cancer, and um, you know, it, it, it's kind of obviously it, it's tough to take as a kid. But you know, and obviously my, my dad's quite heavily disabled as well himself, and he's gone through his, his rough patches. And you know, my mum what was always sort of a care for my dad, and sort of you know was you know it's, it's strange really. I think. It, as a kid growing up, you only ever, well, I've only ever known sort of my dad in and out of hospital and then obviously my mum when she was a little bit older, so to go through what her battles, but I always took strength from my parents and what they had to battle through. To see my mum go through what she went through and, and the battles and, and, and to keep fighting an illness for you know, so long. And to be in and out of hospital for sort of the best part of 13 years and um, to still see her sort of push us as kids uh, and my dad as well, you know, to sort of despite the adversity that they're going through to take you to training, to take you to every single match. I always felt, you know, there's always a duty to, to pay them back and, and that's why my always my ethos has been is, you know, why I probably committed to, to everything I, as I have done is because I brought them, they went above and beyond and, and you know, to, 
when she was at her most poliest to, to see her check herself out of you know Leeds <laughs> St James's Hospital in Leeds and, and sort of come to watch us play rugby to be admit herself after so she could con continue her, her cancer treatments um, probably just summed her up really just just such a, a proud fierce woman who, who just lived for her kids as as all parents do. Wow. That's a good one. When I first met him, he was actually injured. He'd just had an op not many days before. I can see him now. He was, uh, yeah, like a giant, just stood there at the at the doors waiting. And I was walking up, so nervous. He was, it's like a big, gentle giant. He was just like lovely from the way to go kind of thing. He was just really polite, really respectful. He's a big softie, really. I know he looks angry on the pitch, but he's, um, yeah, he's got a good heart. Simone fell pregnant, and you know, Atticus was was well baked and um, for the last sort of few weeks leading into the birth, I was, any away trips, I was travelling in my car separately if I needed to get away quickly. I was playing this game and it got to the second half and I got pulled off the pitch quite early in the second half and it wasn't my usual game plan that, it was something that was a bit miss and I sort of looking around, everyone's looking a bit sheepish <laughs> and everyone's sort of a bit. His wife has actually gone into labour and Alex Wormsley has left the ground to be there. Well, I hope she can hang on for the next hour and a half. <laughs> I was just sat there thinking, no, people are in labour for days. And then literally fast forward half an hour, I was on the way to the hospital with my mum. Water's broke in the car, baby nearly here. I'm being a bit naughty down the M62, going as fast as I can. A mum mung me and all I could hear was a baby crying. And I thought, and she went, oh, she finally got a signal. It was so really broken and stuff like that. And she went, oh, don't worry, he's fine. Atticus is here, Simone's fine. But he was, uh, he was never going to make it, but it was, um, it was nice when he got there. He just got the prize. He missed all the gory bits. <laughs> he's a wonderful dad. The boys absolutely idolise him, obviously on the pitch, but and off the pitch. He's just got so much patience with them. And this is more of a worry. Big Alex Wormsley wasn't certain what had gone on. There's the contact. His head's in oh, the wrong the place. Head, yeah. Yeah, to hear it was, was quite surreal. Um, I said, I don't want you to panic, you're fine, but you, you broke your neck. The world sort of come crashing down a bit, you know, your, your mind goes into, into overdrive, you're sort of thinking and the stigma what comes with, with that kind of injury and, and everything what comes off the back of it. And... He's a dad and when you're getting told that, you know, is, is, it might finish his career, but then like, at, like after the op or during the op complications, you know, he could not walk and those kind of things. You kind of think, oh my gosh, like this can affect his life, can affect him as a dad, you know, all those. Um, so it was really scary, really, really scary at that time. You know, you, you sort of question, is my livelihood going to be the same, you know? But, you know, thankfully, you know, John's one of the best surgeons in the world um, in, in that department. And, you know, John got me in and performed a miracle for, for me in, in terms of an operation. So I've got a, a plate and four screws at the front and a plate and, and four screws at the back and, and a cage in between just keeping everything together. You know, obviously there was a lot of unknown and about about the recovery at the time and you know I, I can remember speaking to, to John Leach once I was back playing afterwards to the surgeon and you know he was sort of saying you know, it was it was the first time he'd seen that kind of injury in an athlete and someone come back and, and play sport again. So he was probably as nervous as, as himself of his of his craftsmanship and whether his uh, surgery had worked as I suppose I was going back onto the field at some point. You know, thankfully I play a position where it's pretty it's pretty non-stop, so you know that first sort of contact comes before you know it. The game kicks off and you're straight into it and and you sort of just get this sense of relief after every tackle. I've survived one. <laughs> onto the next. But I've got another one done here, onto the next. And that was always going through my mind and sitting down in in, in the change room after the game, the relief, you know, and, and I was just, just, again, so sort of grateful and pleased that I sort of got through it and I was sat down. And, and to be honest, it, it, I still have to check myself every now and again. There's still, you know, there is still a moment where I might find myself in an uncomfortable position to tackle and stuff. And the first thing I'm thinking about is getting me into a good position or getting myself into just because it comes back to you straight away. It's weird. I'm grateful that I'm, I've kind of got it mainly at the back of my mind and it allows me to do what I need to do now for not just for myself, but obviously for, for the team and, and the club and my family and what I do off the back of that. Malik's wow. on the charge! Oh, he's Wormsley getting is on the charge! For me, he's at the, the pinnacle of Super League in terms of props. So 
I don't know what I'd want to do about terms of going to Australia. I know he's turned it down in the past. You know, the, f the first opportunity when it, when it came, it, you know, was, was 2015. And um, my mum had just passed you know, about 12 months before. And, you know, and my, my dad was still about, but my, I always felt my rugby was a big part of my dad's life. And I felt I couldn't take that away from him. Um, you know, and I think you just didn't feel right. And then, to be honest, it, I've always been happy, you know, and I've, I've always been happy. And I think 2017, the World Cup come, and there was more opportunities then, and there was, there was, there was more, more chances to go. But, you know, Atticus had just been born. But ultimately, I was happy. And I think I've always made my decisions on, on putting your price on happiness. And you could go out and you can earn obviously more money and you can go and experience a different lifestyle. But if you're happy, if you've if you're settled and you're happy with, with your rugby and, and you're enjoying it, then I don't sometimes don't think a few extra quid in the bank makes it worth the, the decision to move. It's, you know, why, why risk appeasing the family to, to the other side of the world if you're happy and enjoying yourself, to, you know, and, and, and that was it, you know. It, it was easy to stay in the end. Three times. Time. There's an opportunity to do something what no one else has done and, and, and sort of write ourselves in, in a real true true part of history in the sport and, and become a team who's done it four times on the bounce and it's no get me wrong, it's gonna be taking on an, an unbelievable effort and to keep head of the pack is getting harder and harder but we're a tough team and listen, you, you talk about your favourite grand final, it's always the next one and hopefully that'll be this year.